good morning everyone welcome back to the channel today it's the first video for a long time because we've been away on a cruise and let me tell you now you say cruising is for old people and you know who you are when I say this uh, but it ain't there's lots of kids lots of young couples on there now it's a cheap holiday now it will inclusive for two weeks you can do it for 700 pound each anyway by the by Ah, I did do a little video overview of that, so I'll put that up somewhere. Anyway, today we're talking about owning my T1000S 1998 model and what it's like to live with it. But before we do that, we need some fuel for the TL and uh, we'll talk you through about the ownership. So until then... Morning. Okay, so that's the bike filled up. Yeah, so today we're just going to have a quick run through about owning a T1000S. So I bought this six, seven years ago, I think. I paid $2,300. Um, I bought it online. Um, the guy was coming down this way. I said I was seriously interested in it. So he said he'd chuck it in the back of the van as he was delivering other bikes. Anyway, so I did buy it. Um, it didn't look like this, uh, it looked a bit um, rougher, shall we say. Um, it had a belly pan as well on it, which I didn't like. Uh, had an oil leak, front brakes didn't work. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't in good shape, but it was rideable as such. But the first job I had to do was sort the front brake out. Um, apparently they have a bit of a reputation for not being able to bleed the brakes very well. Um, so I had the brake calipers rebuilt and then I um, bought a ZZR 1400 uh, master cylinder uh, only because that has a bleed nipple at the very top uh, so bled the brakes no issues and they, they were working fine I haven't got it on there anymore because um, it fouled the um, fairing so uh, it used to foul the MT on it to save faffing around with it all um, I put it back to the original one which, I've, which is fine could probably do with another little bleed and then once I started riding it, I found out on the clutch side uh, it was slipping. Now everyone would say, oh, you need a weld, the clutch center is up and stuff like that. I haven't done any of that. I just adjusted it to uh, what the manual says and it's never slipped since. Admittedly, someone's got some heavier clutch springs in here, um, which makes it riding any distance a bit painful on my wrist. But yeah, so it never slips. Um, I did have this like a little carrier plate uh, spins around I don't know what you call it if I find the name I'll put it in the description uh, but the ball wall bearings and that basically fell apart uh, so you couldn't operate the clutch properly so I had to replace that uh, one of the other things I did have with it uh, was an oil leak uh, from the clutch cover side so when the bike got really hot the oil leak got uh, worse and worse so uh, Again, Google's your friend in it, so uh, apparently because it's a plastic clutch cover, uh, all the heating and cooling uh, distorts it. So what you have to do, which I did, is uh, the dowels that it sits over on the engine casing, you fold them down like half a mil, and then it allows you to pull the clutch cover on a bit tighter with a new gasket. And that worked for me, so um, that was fixed, which is ideal. Gotta pass
So yeah, so that was the oil leak fixed. And then the next issue I had, uh, let's try to think about this because I've had all sorts of issues, yeah. So I had the, um, so I would take the bike out and then uh, wheel it out of the garage and then suddenly it just wouldn't start, dead, dead as a dodo. Uh, again, Googling and speaking to some friends. Oh God, look at this traffic. Why do I do it? All right, so the most of the video is going to be sent in the um, traffic queued up to get onto the bridge. Oh well. Yeah, so where was I? Oh yeah, so the bike wouldn't start. Um, so wheel it back in, go Google it, and apparently it's the um, like the master relay, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, go back out, give that a wiggle, and the whole bike comes alive. So uh, I had to take all that off and clean it. Uh, it's been fine ever since. And then the next problem I had is like, again, I would go out, park it up somewhere, just about to go for a ride out, knowing that we're coming back during the night and I always put the lights on anyway. No lights, no lights at all. <laughs> Brake lights are that fine. No, uh, no main lights. Uh, so, if, oh, Jesus, I go back rip the fairing off after googling it apparently the electrics for the bike aren't very um, very good that's a known issue with them yeah and sure enough I take our electrical connection block out Oop. on the right hand side of the panel here and it's all corroded a bit black so uh, yeah spend an hour or two trying to clean all that up and make that good again and that seemed to work and then what else have I had oh yeah so I moved the bike out into, into the drive in my previous house, put it on the stand and went back into the garage to do something else. And the bike decided to um, slide, down the, uh, slide down the drive, hit my van and then tipped over into next door's car. So scratched their car, scratched my van, which I wasn't worried about, but smashed all this metal work up here, smashed all the fairing up. <sighs> this is a nightmare. And of course, not being a particularly new bike and a popular bike it was difficult to get well i couldn't get any new panels basically i had to get second hand panels uh, a few of them were cracked so i had to get them welded repaired and then i had it respray so yeah so this is not the original paintwork this bike came with and i think it's been dropped down the road a few times before anyway so yeah i've had it all resprayed i have since managed to put a dent in the tank and a scratch on the fairing which is a bit annoying uh, yeah so that's the problems I've had so far with it I can think of I did change the thermostat out for one that um, potentially opens up a bit hotter because uh, these don't get off the cold map until they reach 80 degrees So I did change the thermostat in this to uh, so it opened up when it got hotter than it was originally because these are known for not getting hot enough and apparently the cold map comes off at 80 degrees and now we're only running at 86 at the moment so it should be on the hot map now but if it's winter time this bike really struggles to get up the temperature and there, there is a bodge around that but I haven't bothered to do it. Uh, what else have I done to it? Oh yeah, I had a fuel leak, so the, yeah, so the little vent that runs to the top of your tank here, down to uh, like an overflow, to stop so water gets in here goes out. Yeah, that, that was leaking somewhere, so that just leaked petrol out all the time when you filled the tank. So I, uh, I've had to block that off, unfortunately. Oh uh, yeah, and I, <laughs> when I redid, when I had the tank resprayed, there's obviously the fuel pump and that all underneath the tank and the gasket. It's only talked about five pound, the bolts. All I didn't know is that if that face isn't flat, uh, then there's no way this on this earth that you can get a nice good seal. Anyway, I put it all on, leaked, take it all off, try to tighten up a little bit more, put some stuff around it, still leaked. And then obviously like you do, you go to uh, Google, read up on it 
and they said well, if that face isn't flat where the gas is and that all goes on you never uh, you never stop it from leaking so I did I put a straight edge on it and found out it was all over the place so uh, I managed to tap that out and fix that problem so yeah it's not one of these little um, issues all the time now I'll take you for a little walk around it because the engine now is looking a bit tatty paintwork needs doing on the engine it probably needs a good strip the swing arm or the back end needs doing probably needs new shocks it definitely needs new uh, forks re chroming yeah there's still a lot of work to do on this and I don't know what I am gonna do whether I just shove it in the back of the garage or I spend a bit of time and money doing it up but I've still got the Honda that I'm restoring to do yet Oh God, so much for having a couple of years planned to get these bikes up and running properly. So what do I think of owning this TL for uh, six or seven years? I love it. I love the music it makes. I love the sound of it, of these pipes. But oh yeah, and that's the other issue. I see the exhaust pipes are rotting away, the carbon fiber ones. So I need to replace them sometime, because in a minute, they would just be blowing all over the place. Anyway, but I do love riding this thing. The power delivery is awesome on it. This thing doesn't really get going to about four and a half, five grand really, possibly six, and then it takes off like a scolded cap. Uh, surprising for a, however old it is, 25 year old, 27 year old bike. Uh, and I still think it looks amazing. Uh, I love it. Yeah, so that's my little thoughts on riding my TL and the issues I've had with it. Um, might talk to you in a minute. We're just off to try it for a cup of coffee and meet some lads. This um, blast up the A38 here. Thank you. Off a bit actually. So you can see what it says about the temperature? 77. And it's 19 degrees outside, so this thing's running pretty cool again. Anyway. What are you doing? Green lights. Okay, here we are at Triumph for my usual stop for a cup of coffee. Um, so, yeah, let's probably call it quits for the minute for this video. It's only a short one, like I said. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Give us a like if you liked it. Give us a thumb down if you didn't. And uh, give us a subscribe please. That would be ideal. 